a lot faster than Furman's previous matchup against Mercer. Mercer, pose a different kind of challenge than ETSU does tonight. ETSU loves to get up and down. They have high quality athletes. I'm gonna have to stay out of your way for the most part today, Bryant, because these guys get up and down in a hurry. This is your type of basketball game. This is the kind you like to play in. They've already dribbled it too much for me, Bryant. Taps controlled by the Bucks. Furman starts off half court man to man, exactly down the right side of the lane, off the glass and in. And Terrence, there's the exact speed you talked about and is slowing off to a quick start. Uh, his change of pace is terrific. Whenever he's coming off ball screens, he's so savvy and really strong with his right hand getting all the way to the cup. See the starting five earlier for the Paladins. Jalen Slauson, big time inside presence, picks up his dribble, now 10 on the shot clock. And Slauson has an advantage today as far as size is concerned. You can't leave that man open as well as he's been playing lately. Bothwell not able to make his first one drop, but communication, goodness me. ETSU dunking all over everybody. Communication and transition defense for Furman is key. ETSU loves to take off in transition and get dunks and show off their athleticism like that possession. Freshman out of Charlotte, Jaden Seymour. Throwing it down for the Bucks. A fast start here for ETSU. Long range three up for Bothwell. That's off the mark. Rebound taken down by ETSU. Bothwell comes in shooting it well for the Paladins beyond the arc on the year. Over 35%. Alex Hunter leads the team 44% from long range. Here's Brewer driving to the basket. Loses it to Bothwell, and now Furman wanted to go quickly into the front court. Paladins come in, averaging just over 78 points a game. The Bucks, just about 70. Slauson working along the baseline, backing down Seymour, and he gets the Paladins on the board and cuts the deficit early here at four to two. Interesting to see on that possession, ETSU stayed in man-to-man one-on-one, -on -one, did not double team from some of their bigger, or for some of their guards. Interesting to watch out for as the game moves forward. Jalen Slauson can score with his back to the basket, but ETSU, I'm curious to see how long it's gonna take them to start doubling because when Slauson's one-on-one, -on -one, he's tough to guard. Ty Brewer off the mark, Furman hedged on the screen, left Brewer open who couldn't knock it down. Here's Slauson looking for back-to-back -back buckets out to Marcus Foster, he's open off the mark, rebound taken down by the Bucks. Furman has a team 38% from long range as that ball's partially blocked, getting it back at Seymour but dribbles it off his foot, Sloan Picks up the loose ball, tries to get it to fall, can't. Seymour hesitates, blocked by Slauson and a late whistle and a foul. As you take a look at Desmond Oliver in his first season at ETSU, Terrence didn't go far, been an assistant the last six years in Knoxville with Rick Barnes and the Tennessee Volunteers. And you have to be thrilled for Coach Oliver. Simply put, he has been an assistant in a basketball life forever since 1994, spending time at Georgia, Charlotte, Tennessee. Happy he finally gets his first chance at ETSU. That is a home run hire for the Buccaneers. And Coach Ritchie, what all can we say that we haven't already, Brian? Fastest Furman coach to 100 wins. Got it Saturday. Palins played downtown, Bonsacor Bonus Arena. Knocked off Mercer. For just five seasons, four plus, really, Coach Bob Ritchie, fastest Furman coach to 100 wins as the Bucks push the lead back to four at six to two. Little token full court pressure. Foster drives baseline. Terrence, if you're able to beat the pressure, get there before the defense gets set. That's an easy two for Marcus Foster. Well, you looked at that pressure, the one, two, two full court zone. You're getting a little bit top heavy, and that's going to open up the baseline on occasion. Marcus Foster, who knocked down that layup. One of the most improved players in the SOCON this season. Trying to get it down low on the block to Seymour. Back out to Jordan King, 10 on the shot clock. King all the way down, avoids oh, the block by Slauson. Nice finish on the left hand, and the Bucks getting into the paint early. Really nice. The Buccaneers have several players that can break you down off the dribble. Really nice move by Jordan King, sophomore from New York. Slauson trying to get Garrison free. Here's Hunter step back. He thought about it. Lawson As you see, backing down Seymour. ETSU staying home. It's going to take a few possessions for them to realize you have to throw another body at Jalen Slauson because even though he has wing capabilities as far as the skill perspective is concerned, with his back to the basket, using his athleticism, he's so tough to guard one on one. Approaching the first media timeout, both teams early 50% from the field. 
Sloan pull up long range, a bit too strong. Rebound taken down by Seymour. Readily evident how athletic ETSU is coming into this. Several offensive rebounds here to start the game. Not to mention, really quick with the ball in their hands can really create some problems, especially in help situations. Both, both teams good rebounding team. Fallon is getting the turnover, looking to tie or take their first lead here in the early going. Othwell working against King. Double team comes and is swatted out of bounds by Seymour. He'll stay with the Paladins. But we come back, 15.34 to go here in the first half. Berman trailing at eight to six. ETSU getting it done here early inside. Welcome back inside Timmins, ETSU up too early. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Oglesby with you. And Terrence, inside Timmins, Furman is very, very tough to beat. This weekend downtown, Bonsacre Wellness Arena, another tough environment. Well, they did an excellent job of pushing the pace. Now, Bonsacre Wellness is a little bit bigger, but nonetheless, Furman still found a way to manage the pace of the game and continue to push the ball in transition against a Mercer team that, quite frankly, outsized them pretty significantly. Did a nice job drawing mismatches, penetrating, creating opportunities for each other. This was a clinic as far as penetrate and kick out. Mike Bothwell, he could knock down some shots as well. It was a three-point barrage led off by Joe Anderson off the bench. Hit his career high five three-pointers in that game. Brian. Five of six from downtown, career high, mentioned 15 points. They would also big contributor Joe Anderson, not only that game, but he's had 11 points all games as ETSU, another steal. Ty Brewer misses the layup. I think he was trying to draw the foul from Anderson and got a little too careless. And I think Anderson got away with one, hit him on the back of the leg there. Nonetheless, get that rebound, take off, and transition. Quick trigger three taken by King. That's off the mark, Terrence. You said it was going to be a fast game. That's the case here. Count it. For Yazer, the freshman out of Egypt with a chance for a three-point play. His offensive rebounds now four for the Buccaneers here in the early going. And sometimes when you're able to play at that pace, that's going to drive some offensive rebounds because guys are struggling to get back in position. There you see the series history very tightly contested. Last meeting, a nine-point win up Johnson City, ETSU with the narrow series advantage. Bucks with the chance to get their largest narrow lead here in the early going. Hauser, hey, well, that's a lot of size down low, 6'5 for the freshman. Pagiesen for the Paladins, Nashville, Tennessee native. Also, been up and down so far. JP Pagiesen, you can see his talents readily elevant, uh, Red, readily evident, excuse me. Good length on defense, solid quickness. Kind of worked his way in and out of the rotation so far this year, but he has an excellent future for the Paladins. Both these teams still without a three-pointer. ETSU, one of the longest streaks in the country with a made three-pointer. As the Paladins here, though, turn it over for the second time. ETSU over 1,100 games making a shot from beyond the arc. Here with the basketball, an early five-point lead in Greenville. Brewer working against Bothwell, trying to get it down low. Spin move, Ty Brewer off the glass and in. Brother-to-brother -brother combination. L.A. Brewer, who made that pass, led this Buccaneers team in scoring last season. Struggled getting to the free throw line this season, Bryant. Still dynamic athlete just hasn't been able to get as many calls but nonetheless just one of just one of many ETSU athletes big time athletes he to Bothwell corner Anderson that's off the mark weak side rebound taken down by ETSU double T comes able to get it out to Weber now numbers for the Bucks stop pop three-pointer on the way that's off the mark Huey couldn't grab the rebound back up with the Yasser that won't fall and Hey, what, every battle contested down low right now. Yeah, and I mean, Furman's going up with one hand to get all these rebounds. Got to go up with two. There's been a lot of batting the ball around. Furman can afford to do a better job of finishing possession, getting out and running, because that's when they're at their best. Anderson for another three-pointer. That one rattles home. Joe Anderson stays hot. And that's the first three-pointer for either squad here tonight. Was five of six last game. Going to keep his hot shooting going. Joe Anderson... Also, another guy that has just been terrific as far as, as far as continuous improvement for the Paladins. Now, he takes it away. Coach Ritchie wanting this team to go quick. Anderson. He and now back to Joe Anderson. You'll see it. They're having to go over ball screens with Anderson now. That might not have been the case early in the season. 
corner. Can Anderson hit another one? A bit too short. Huey with the rip side bunny, and all of a sudden a quick 5-0 run has it down to a two-point game. Well, neither team has done a great job of finishing possessions and boxing out first misses, but Huey, number 15, who ended up knocking down the layup on the putback, late red shirt pull. Big-time athlete, still a freshman, but provides a lot of physicality in the post. Yeah, Coach Ritchie saying, hey, he was getting too many rebounds of physical and practice to keep him on the bench as that three-pointer's off the mark. Strong rebound taken down by Bothwell. Quickly into the front court, Pagis. Over to Huey, thought about a three, hesitates over to Bothwell. Here's Heen down low, rejected. Close to goaltending, no whistle. Now Huey will launch a three-pointer. That one off the mark. Heen with the offensive board. He gets it off the glass, can't get it to fall, and it's back to the Bucks. Both teams with multiple chances. Here's Ladarius Brewer quickly baseline, counted, reverse layup foul, and a chance to go to the line for a three-point play. And Terrence, just how fast the Bucks go again. Take a look at that block. Man, just, just a big-time athlete is Ty Brewer. And on the other end, his brother able to get the end one. I feel like I've said it and said it and said it, but big time athletes for ETSU. And if you don't see the help side coming over, that's when they can be really damaging defensively. Keys to the game. Tell you what, saying ETSU keep the energy. Right now, they're bringing it on both sides of the court. Furman keep up a high pace just to stay with ETSU. Yeah, just to kind of keep it together. And another thing to keep in mind, Bryant, this is ETSU's fourth game in seven days. I mean, this is a team, because of some pauses, you're having to reschedule some games, and they tend to pile on top of each other. And what ended up happening is, maybe it doesn't show in the first half, but in the second half, it's entirely possible maybe their legs go a little bit. They need to maintain their discipline. But so far, no sign of fatigue for the Buccaneers. Slawson through contact. He'll learn two shots at the line when we come back. Jalen Slauson, you get him in the post. I wonder how long it's going to take for ETSU to send another guy at him. He's multidimensional, inside and out, trying to get Furman back in it. Big early conference matchup here. Furman game out of first place here in the Southern Conference standings, trailing 16 to 11. The Bucks, two and two in the Southern Conference. They're coming off a big 20-point win at home against. Western Carolina, but Terrence, even though you're only four or five games into the conference season, games like tonight, the league starts to separate itself a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we're only four or five games in, depending on who you're looking at, but at the same time, this is when you start to set a precedent for the rest of your season. Give your guys some confidence and know that, hey guys, if I'm Furman, know that we have the talent to be at the top of this league and to possibly win this wing. If I'm ETSU, first year head coach, Get him, some, get him some confidence. Get your guys some confidence in the coaching staff. Two and two so far, doesn't happen often. But at the same time, they have an excellent head man right there in your screen, Des Oliver. Slauson misses the first 73, almost 74% free throw shooter from the line. This season is the second one rattles out. So a rare 0 for 2 performance from the line for Jalen Slauson. Bucks get it back with a five point lead, largest lead for ETSU has been seven at 13 to six. Nice backdoor pass corralled and laid up and in by Yazer. He now has five and the lead ties the Bucks largest at seven. Excellent pass by Sloan, not pick it, just, it's much easier to make those backdoor passes with one hand if you dribble it harder. He's one of those guys that pounds the ball into the floor and as a result, you can put it on a dime a lot quicker because it gets in your hand faster, but nice job by Yasser putting it high, not letting the shot walk and come over and help. McGee's wide open look, in and out, ball tapped out by Hunter over to Slauson, thought about a three. Back out to Foster. Foster down the lane off the glass, Terrence, nice job not settling for the three and getting the bucket off the glass. And I was about to say, he has an open one, you don't necessarily want to pass it up, but Marcus Foster is such a big, strong athlete. Whenever he gets in there, he has the ability to finish with either hand. Good decision. And Alex Hunter, he has the... Tough job of guarding Sloan up top. Yasser's gonna step back for three-pointer. That's off the mark. Long rebound taken down by Conley Garrison. Rebound's now 11 to 10 in favor of ETSU. Nice save by Pagese. Hunter still looking for his first points. 
Foster into the lane. Left-handed finish off the glass. Marcus Foster has six and a strong finish on the left side. Man, he's got such broad shoulders. Whenever he puts that in a defender's chest, there's, they don't have a chance to elevate. Really strong move. Foster comes in averaging eight and a half a game. Already has six here in the first 10 minutes. Furman on a quick 4-0 run after falling back by seven. Sloan far side, three-pointer on the way. Ty Brewer who knocks it down. That's a big time play. Nice shot by Ty Brewer, obviously. David Sloan attacking the hard hedge and giving his team the advantage. Excellent move on his part. A heck of a pass across his body to the opposite corner. Hunter looks to answer. That's halfway down and back out. Some of these Furman misses, Terrence, are good looks. Just can't quite finish as ETSU quickly into the front court. That's going to be goaltending count it. So the Bucks push the lead to eight as the teams trade buckets. Communication and transition defense. I've already said it a couple times, Brian, but it has to be high level if you're Furman. Because sometimes ETSU, not saying they always do, but they can struggle to score on against a set defense. You're not doing that today. Furman's not able to knock down as many shots. That's resulting in a lot of fast break pushes and easy layups. And they'll continue to run the entirety of the game. Now, that could change. Furman starts hitting some of these open shots. Then they're having to play against a set defense. Furman just one of 10 here in the first half from beyond the arc, trailing it by eight. Here's the Bucks' largest lead in the early going. Lean to Bothwell, thought about it. Free throw line, back out to Hunter. Now Foster, five to shoot, picks up his dribble, forces up a left-handed finish, and how about Marcus Foster? All left hand for Marcus Foster. Great move. It was an interesting, interesting to see right there. ETSU switches the four and five, and they don't lose any size because they're six six across the board. Once you get to that three position, gives them a lot of defensive versatility. That's Shot a good call. off the mark is going to be an offensive foul. Excuse me, a defensive foul. And Marcus Foster holding the rebound, so he'll stay with the Bucks. Right idea, bad execution. Foster, you box out, you hit once, you check, and then you turn around and find. You have to root them out with your back, but nonetheless, they are missile offensive rebounding, trying to get there with their athletes. Both teams, five offensive rebounds. ETSU only two second chance points, now fours. That's finished off the glass by Seymour, and he now has six. Furman wanted to go quickly as well as Foster's fouled on the floor. About points in the paint right now. Both teams making hay. ETSU 16 points in the paint, Furman 14. But not a whole lot of outside shooting. ETSU's hit a few, but Furman slow to get going here in the early going. But still, nonetheless, Brian, sometimes you can't get discouraged because you're still creating good shots for yourself. I can't, I can't think of more than one, maybe two shots that you don't like coming in. And there's another one. Just doesn't fall. And those things are going to happen sometimes, but you're still creating good, good looks through ball movement and player movement. Far side hesitation, Yasser three on the way. That's off the back of the rim. Hunter with the rebound. Bucks now one of eight from beyond the arc. Approaching the under eight media timeout. Palin is trailing ETSU here in Timmons by eight. Hunter looking to get going. That's long range, front of the rim. Rebound taken down by Vonnie Patterson, the graduate student out of Louisville, Kentucky. Yazer tries to get it down low to Patterson. Back pass off the glass and in, and it's a double-digit lead for the Bucks now at 10, 27-17. Hey, Moab, Moab Yasser has come in and impressed here early. He looks winded right now, but not the best athlete on the team, but a really smart cutter and solid finisher around the basket so far, and tough finish by Mike Bothwell. That's Bothwell's first bucket. No player for either team in double digits. Yasser with nine to lead the Bucks, eight for Marcus Foster to lead Furman. Sloan gets caught in the air and is going to be bailed out with a foul. It'll be ETSU basketball when we come back. 7.33 to go here in the opening half. Bucks lead it by eight here in Timmins. Brian Lambert, Karis Ogles, we back with you. The Bucks in the midst of a run of multiple games. Some of them rescheduled Terrence and said, hey, it could be a factor in the second half. But so far, Bucks 50% for the field. Well, they're doing a nice job from inside the three. Neither team really lighting it up from the, from the three. Furman, one of 12 to start out with, and ETSU, one of eight. But the difference of the game so far has been transition defense for Furman. ETSU is able to maintain this pace. So far this game, 10 of 14, I would venture to guess five or six of those buckets, Bryant, have been a result of transition or offensive rebounds, things that you can clean up and things that are controllable if you're a paladin. 
Trying to backdoor pass, ball knocked away. Here's Anderson leading the break. Quickly up to Alex Hunter, he'll slow things down. Hunter still looking for his first points. He's 0-3 from long range. There's Bothwell can't finish. Heen keeps it alive out to Hunter. Over to Anderson, thought about it. Good patience. This is where you need to find ways to score. Slauson has been remarkably consistent in there, and you're going to be able to draw some fouls. L.A. Brewer, a little bit late on the help, got too much arm. They're going to have to bring an extra body there. There you see one of the first downs, the double team coming over on Slauson. Well, they had to. I mean, David Sloan was down there on a mismatch. They were going to have to send one more body, but I've been, I, I'm curious to see how ETSU handles, handles that moving forward. And they're switching one through five. Bothwell tries to get an inbound to Deheen, but turns the basketball over. Ball knocked away. And Darius Brewer gets a hand on it. Now Furman gets the basketball right back. Both teams trading turnovers here in the mid stages of this opening half. Eight point ETSU lead. They've led from the tip. See how hard Brewer's making it to get the basketball to Alex Hunter. Bothell has it poked away, gets it back, sends it out to Heen, one more to Hunter, all the way to Anderson, wide open in the corner. Woefully short, but Heen gets the offensive board. He's battling, and I think the shot clock reset, but Terrence, I'm not sure if it hit the rim. I thought the ball actually did hit the rim, Bryant, but nonetheless, you have to love the ball movement if you're Furman. I think they're gonna come and take a look Official's going to go to the monitor to see if that last shot, Joe Anderson was trying to knock it down from the corner, hit the rim. Raymond Stiones, Mark Schoen, Chris King. The official's here. <laughs> um, Mark Schnur, very well respected official. Bring the referees over the scores table. It's come down to transition. I mean, bottom line, so far, you've got to be able to get back and communicate. That ball did hit the rim. It did hit the rim, so. Credit the shot clock operator, it was correct, and then they were battling for the rebound. So, hey, they may put, what, 17, 18 seconds back on the shot clock since it, Terrence obviously is going to hit the rim for a reset. He gets the rebound and then juggled it a bit. So I'm curious to see if they put, not that it consequently really even matters, but if they take two seconds off for Heen being on the floor. If I'm a betting man, I would say 18. No. I was, I'm going to go with 18 on the shot clock. You want to sit it with 20? All right. We'll see who's right. I'm not, I, I never try to read officials' minds. There you'll see the rebound. Uh, you know what? There was down. no rotation coming off. Maybe we could get a little bit slower. Yeah, I think, I think it hit. I think it hit, yeah. The, the officials have the stopwatch out now, so they couldn't just be looking at how many additional seconds ran off. As it stands right now, ETSU Terrence shooting 50% from the field, 11 to 22. One of eight from long range. Furman 36%, just one of 14 from long range. Well, you say, as fast as this game has been, how about this, just two fast break points. Those are for ETSU. There's no way that's them. right. I'm, I'm, there's no way that's right. Sometimes people let it get ahead of them because they are, put, they are pushing the ball in transition, and sometimes even though the defense is back, they're having a hard time matching up, and ETSU still sending guys to the rim and then flaring out to the three-point line. So I guess we're going to stay at 20. Oh, they're going to nope. move it down to three. See, I'm surprised. Oh, so they say it didn't they hit. They say it. Look, we're, that's why enough. we do our job in the, the stripes to theirs. I thought... I think they get paid more than us, too, so that makes a lot of sense. Tonight, though, I mean, you see it on the screen, 1 of 13, and they haven't been bad looks, Bryant, so far. This Furman team's an excellent three-point shooting team. Just tonight, even though ball's been moving well, just hasn't been able to knock down shots. So Furman basketball, three on the shot clock after it was not reset. Bothwell step back, hesitates, and it's going to be a shot clock violation as Bothwell doesn't get the shot off. And the Bucks get it back. That's the fifth Furman's, or fourth Furman's turnover here in the opening half. And here's a nice job by the Bucks there, defending the perimeter, not letting Bothwell get that look off. Just general awareness by ETSU being able to stay on top of the ball and switch if needed. I, I, I've been really impressed early, Bryant, with their switchability on defense. I mean, they have a lot of long athletes and man, do they swarm to the ball fast. King loses it out of bounds. Both teams ratcheting up the pressure defensively. And right when I'm saying nice things about ETSU, they turn it over because of Furman's good defense. This is two teams that may not play with a pure five-man or a natural five-man that likes to sit in the post. 
but man, do they move well defensively when having to cover areas, whether that be over on help side, as you see, as Slauson's not able to get the ball, but they swarm to the basketball. They swarm to ball side. Both teams have been excellent so far today at doing so. ETSU scoreless the last 205, though, still holding this eight point advantage. Heavy pressure man to man defense. And they, both sides answers. Hunter looks to get going, and you know you can't keep him down long. Top in the country in three point shooting right up there is Alex Hunter, and he gets his first bucket. Finally able to knock that one down. I, I've never seen him miss more than three in a row, and I've been here pretty much all year, Brian. A fantastic shooter, nice play design to get him open, and the guy go underneath the screen. And David Sloan. His quickness with the basketball really has stood out so far. And his first bucket since the opening layup and the crowd starting it into it. Sloan quiets this Timmons crowd. Back to a seven point game as Hunter looks for back to back three pointers and that's off the mark. Tapped out last touch by Slauson. He'll be Buccaneer basketball. And it's tough right now because two through five position wise or three through five position wise they're all about the same size, and what's happening is they're like switching, and it's hard to maintain any kind of advantage. Number 22, Jaden Seymour, freshman out of Charlotte, has done a terrific job early of both guarding on the perimeter and switching on some of the bigs. Sloan tries to get into the paint again. It's going to be a hand check up top. Six Furman team foul, no shots. He'll stay with the Bucks. It has been awfully physical on the perimeter, and to call a small hand check like that, that's tough. ETSU just three team fouls in this fast-moving opening half. Ready, ready, it's the second personal foul on Jalen Slauson, something to keep an eye out on. And what a shot, step back by Ladarius Brewer. Timeout taken by Bob Ritchie as the Bucks have the lead back to 10. They've made their last three from the field and a quick 5-0 run by ETSU after Furman had cut it to five. Well, the ball has been moving quickly, and when ETSU is able to knock down shots, I mean, that's a tough step-back jumper. L.A. Brewer, he is capable of that. His percentages haven't been great this year, but he is still capable in isolation situations to really have the ability to knock down tough shots. See, Desmond Oliver, he some people would say paid his dues at the Division I Absolutely. level, now getting the opportunity to lead this ETSU program. And like you talked about, knows the ETSU area very well, spending all that years in Knoxville. Well, his recruiting base reaches very wide. He spent time all over the place. I alluded to it earlier, but Niagara, Texas A&M, Cornell, St. Bonaventure, Georgia, Canisi, Charlotte. He's been everywhere, all over the country. So you know his recruiting base is basically everywhere east of the Mississippi. And you might as well throw Texas in there too with his time at Texas A&M. But nonetheless, he was excited about taking the job at ETSU. Great fan support, an excellent administration. And he felt like this is a place where he can win. Conley Garrison off the bench, he'll check in next dead ball. Man, this pressure bothering the Paladins. Long two by Alex Hunter, he confidently knocks it down. He has five and it's back to an eight point game. And that's the value of having a fifth year senior. How good is he at using the ball screen and dribbling? He snaked his way around and did a fantastic job. Nice help side defense by Mike Bothwell. Trying to get it down low to Weber. Bothwell looking to go coast to coast. He has it blocked but fouled and it'll be Bothwell on the line to shoot two where he's over 81% on the year. That is where Furman can get back in the basketball game. Need to do a better job of taking out and transition. And Mike Bothwell is so physically strong, he's gonna be able to live at the free throw line this game because even though ETSU likes to get out and run, sometimes those teams that like to run don't like to get back necessarily. Furman 0 of two from the line, both of those by Slauson as Bothwell knocks it down. One more upcoming as he steps out. As Huey comes back in. Both these teams trading many runs here. Now Furman four in a row. Ten point game down to six here. Nice sub right now. Four minutes, 12 seconds to go. You get Bothwell some time to breathe going into the last media before the half. Conley Garrison comes in. He's been Mr. Dependable as well alongside Alex Hunter. Just another guy, knows how to play and can guard multiple positions. 
Skip pass near side. Brewer looking for another three-pointer. That one's off the mark. Rebound taken down by the Paladins. Furman can cut it to a four three-point game. Here's Foster, spins in the lane, goes with the right hand. That's off the mark. Tips back up, battle, and it's going to be a jump ball. And it should be Paladin possession when we come back. 3.44 to go here in the opening half. Berman battling back, down just six here late in the half. Down Greenville, one of the best downtowns in the southeast, if not across the country right now. About 10 minutes away from downtown. Furman trailing at 32-26. Terrence Pallet is fighting hard to stay in this one despite this 2 of 16 from long range. Well, this is a gun check game if you're Furman. You're not shooting the ball really well up to your standard. This is a team that typically shoots 39% from the three-point line. When the shot's not falling, what are you going to rely on? And a lot of times that results in, hey, we need to create some defense and get it into offense. Their defense is typically really, really good, especially in conference play. They need to find other ways to score the basketball. See the Bucks challenging everything, even inbounds passes. That's knocked out of bounds by Ty Brewer. will stay with Furman. Well, you see the matchup Ty Brewer and Mike Bothwell. And Mike Bothwell's a big, strong kid. Broad, broad shoulders, long arms, but he's standing beside one of the Brewer brothers, typically. And they have length to really bother you. Conley Garrison looking for his first shot attempt. Lost long range by Bothwell who knocks it down. Furman starting to knock him down from long range. And Terrence, it's just a one possession game. After trailing by 10, Timmons starting to get into it a bit. And that's a big difference between the shot from Bothwell on that possession and the previous shots. Steps right into it, rhythm threes, catch and shoot. That's the way that he's gonna be able to get his percentages a little bit higher from three. Bothwell down the lane, count it. And a foul, a chance for Bothwell to tie it up. Both officials hesitated. And now Mike Bothwell, Furman in the midst of a seven, make it now 9-0 run. Well, you rely on your older guys. You rely on your Lou Henson player of the week a few weeks ago, whenever he had 30 on Louisville. This is a big time scorer. And whenever you need buckets, you're down six, you've had trouble offensively getting your flow going. The guy that can do that for you, there's a few of them. But one of those guys is sitting at the free throw line right now, Mike Bothwell, has the physical strength to get to the rim whenever he wants. Averages over 15 a game, makes this. He now has 10, and the Paladins, who trailed by 10 just 90 seconds ago, have tied it up here with 3.10 to go in the half. And interesting to see, after the free throw, Furman picks up full court. ETSU, like we've said, fourth game in seven days. Wonder if you start to see the wear down effect anytime soon. Three nice by offense. King on the way, knocked it down, and King quiets the crowd on his way back. Nice job by Brewer coming off the ball screen. Little roll replace action for ETSU. King pops up, is able to knock it through. Jordan King, the sophomore to Albany, over 40% from long range on the season. Hunter looking to respond. That one's off the mark. Rebound taken down by Vonnie Patterson. Up to Brewer, and little jumper off the mark, out of bounds, last touch by ETSU will be Furman basketball. Great box out by the senior, Alex Hunter. He takes on a much bigger player with number 22, Jaden Seymour. What do you do? You gotta get down in the opponent's legs. Nice job rooting him out. Good hustle by ETSU trying to stay after the offensive rebounds, but nonetheless, Alex Hunter, just knows how to play. One of those crafty YMCA well, type of dudes. A lot more than just a score. He has over 400 career assists. Got that in the pound as one over Sanford. He's just the fifth player in Furman history over 400 assists. So he's more than a score. As Bothwell physical down low. Double team comes. Skips it over to Marcus Foster. Foster right hand finish. Can't get it to go. <laughs> and here come the Bucks in the backcourt. It'll be a trip. And now the seventh foul. Oh, the Paladins will send the Bucks to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Unintentional, Foster got his feet tangled up with Brewer in transition. He was just trying to get back on defense. And almost able to finish the circus shot. Right-handed scoop. If you're Foster, though, do you need to rely on that, Brian? He's so big and so strong. Take an extra dribble, take your time. If you have something, extend over the top. If not... Ty Brewer, 76% free throw shooter. Well, the season goes to a line for a one and one, and that one rattles home. Well, the Bucks, after Furman ties it, hits a quick three, and I'll get to the line to try to push this lead back to five. Foster takes a seat. Joe Anderson back in for the Paladins. So 
second free throw was good. Bucks now a perfect six of six from the free throw line. And a 5-0 run for ETSU after Furman 10-0 run tied things up at 32. Last two minutes to go here in the opening half. See, Joe Anderson's trying to look for an advantage, but what's happening is ETSU switching everything. So whenever he turns the screen back, they just switch back to the original. Win. Nice job by Alex Hunter recognizing that. An old guy. He's an old guy. Recognizing that they're switching, turns down the screen, gets all the way to the rim. I think they called that on the floor, Bryant, but nonetheless, nice job, Alex Hunter, recognizing the switches, staying away from it. 16 foul. Palin is not shooting yet. There you take another look on the hand check. And Keen will check back in. Conley Garrison taking a seat. Garrison yet to get a shot off here. He does have two rebounds and a couple of assists in 11 minutes of action here in the opening half. And number 13, Garrett Heen, who just checked in. Furman's going to need him to be better. He's having a hard time holding on to the basketball, kind of fumbles and stumbles everything. Needs to do a better job just focusing and settling himself down. He's a really good player if he just settles his mind down a little bit. Eight on the shot clock. Anderson gets the screen from Heen. Down the right side, out to Hunter. Three-pointer on the way. No, off the mark. Rebound battled for. Foster loses it. I mean, Huey loses it out of bounds. And Alex Hunter with a good look. Just couldn't quite knock it down. It's been the story of the half so far. Three of 12 from three. No, excuse me. That's ETSU. Three of 20. Yeah, three of 20 from three. The Paladins just, and they're creating good looks. So it's not a matter of shot quality. It just, I think I've seen 10 shots go all the way in and out so far. Bucks with the basketball in the midst of a 5-0 run. Rebounding battle's been something to see. Bucks nearly out rebounding firm in 1917. Oh. Watch out, alley oop. Thrown down by Ty Brewer and a quick 7-0 ETSU run to respond to the Paladins. Good miss did Ty Brewer. His head almost hit the rim, Brian. Big time pass by Jordan King. Teams trading punches here late in the opening half. Backdoor pass to Hunter. Over to Heen in the corner, 15 on the shot clock. Heen looking to back down Ty Brewer. Waits, and then he's going to get called for shuffling his feet. Fallon has turned it over just for the fifth time. Looks towards the end of the half, 47 seconds to play. Furman going to go a little bit of offense, defense, subbing in Conley Garrison, one of the most switchable players on the floor. He's not the tallest guy on the floor, but nonetheless, got the physical strength to stay in front of some players. And ETSU has the type of player that there's not a big time post presence. You're going to be able to switch out. Most of the guys are going to stay on the perimeter. Doesn't really hurt things if you're a little bit undersized. Furman scoreless over the last 226. Bucks in the midst of a 7-0 run after the Palin has tied it at 32. Desmond Oliver, Terrence taking the use it or lose it timeout. BTSU wants to go quick. They can get a little two-for-one here late in the half. Well, you could do a two-for-one. College basketball doesn't typically do that, but it's not like they don't have the ability. Jordan King, you put the ball in his hands, he can make something happen quick. But nonetheless, take a timeout, get a good possession. This is going to be your last possession of the half. Get a good set. Whenever you've run things and used ball screens correctly, you've been able to find open shots if you're Coach Oliver. Sloan with the basketball. He started the game off with a layup, and the Bucks have led the entire first half. A narrow time, it's been tied. King, who hit the big three for the Bucks after Furman had tied it at 32. Shot clock down to 10. King sizing up Conley Garrison, and then a whistle down low is going to send the Bucks to the line for a one and one. I think they're going to get Huey battling underneath. A little too physical on the defensive end. I didn't think there was a ton of. I didn't think there was a ton of contact with Charlie Weber, but nonetheless, thought he was a little bit too physical. Slauson will check in if that was made, but he's going to stay out. He has those two fouls. Furman was maybe trying to get him in for the last offensive possession. Regardless, shot clock turned off. Palin is trailing ETSU by nine. Make it 7, 39, 32. Hunter. Gets it to Heen. Heen to Bothwell. Five to shoot. Hesitates down the right side. Back out to Heen. Three-pointer on the way. Get in there. Falls. <laughs> Hit about every part of the rim. And Garrett Heen 
from long range. Coach Bob Richard turns around, kind of laughs and says, we'll take it. But how about that? Instead of a seven-point game, Terrence, just a four-point game and a half as these two teams go back and forth. There's been a lot of highlights so far, so far, and ETSU's done a great job running in transition. And how about the lob, Ty Brewer, dunking on everybody in Greenville. Yeah, Jalen Slauson, whenever he's been able to get it on the block, he's been really tough to stop because ETSU hasn't been doubling. But Trying to alley-oop to start the Good second gosh. half. Just over the outreach arms of Slauson. And Brewer knocks it down in a big-time start to the second half of the Bucks. Hey, I've seen a lot of athletes, Brian. I've played a lot of basketball in my day. Ty Brewer is one of the better athletes I've seen not only at the collegiate level, but period. I mean, his ability to go up and get it has been second to none today. That's Contact, it's gonna be a blocking foul as Slauson goes to the hardwood. Take another look at that alley-oop, kind of a set play. Great screen, Brewer. yeah, great screen by Sloan, but nonetheless, you still gotta be able to go up there and get it. Wasn't a terrific pass, but just good enough. There's a lot of room for error when you're passing it to Ty Brewer, that's for sure. Last foul going against Seymour, his first team's first here in this second half. Six-point buck lead, ETSU is led by as many as 10. Furman trailed from the tip, did tie it late in that first half. Shot clock now to seven. Bothwell over to Slauson. He's just gonna take a contested three-pointer and knock it down. Jalen Slauson can step beyond the arc. He gotta get a hand in his face and Slauson knocks it down. And that's range. been kind of his Achilles heel on the year. Only 27% from three, but nonetheless, Whenever he's able to knock down that shot, that's his last piece of his game that he can really develop. You've seen it earlier in the game. He can get in the paint and score. If he's able to knock down threes, he's really dangerous. Slauson now with seven points for the Paladins, and here comes Garrison. He's bumped out front. That'll be going against David Sloan, his first and the team's second. And Furman with the back-to-back -back stops. And ETSU, obviously, you don't want to foul in that situation. But nonetheless, you're able to stop the break for Furman. Set your defense. Your defense has done a quality job so far. Call that the Euro foul. See, even for the Paladins, confidence from long range. One of those just kind of takes one going in to see more go in. And just like that, Conley Garrison knocks down his first shot attempt of the game. And back-to-back -back threes has this ball game tied. Great set, great screen to spring open Conley Garrison, who hadn't taken a lot of shots today, but he's fully capable of knocking down a few in a row. Great shot. Not a capacity crowd here in Timmons, but starting to come alive here to see if the Paladins can get their first lead, but the foul going against Alex Hunter, his first, and he'll send the shot clock back to 20, trying to stop the penetration by King. King was the player who hit the big three-pointer when Furman tied it late in that first half to respond for ETSU. Eight, go Come to it. Down low, Darius Brewer working. Gets called for shuffling in his feet. Bucks turn it over for the ninth time. Furman can take their first lead of the basketball game. And you gotta give the referees credit. And I don't say that too often, Brian. <laughs> I, actually, I never say that. But they're letting them play. They're letting them be physical. Good job, Bothwell, moving his feet. Slauson, just showing enough to make them uncomfortable. Nonetheless, travel. Give that ball back to Furman. Slauson against Seymour, back to Hunter. Hunter was just one of seven from long range in that first half. Garrison with a good look one line, just a bit too strong. King sends up the slow, nice pass Goodness. and slammed home by Ty Brewer. Transition defense is where Furman needs to be sharp. And <laughs> Ty Brewer is putting on a show. Look towards the end of the year, he might be a part of that dunk contest, the collegiate dunk contest at the Final Four every season. Man, he is, his ability to elevate Ty is Brewer impressive. Now 13 points, five of eight from the field. Some big time dunks. Slauson with a mismatch, mismatch King is gonna try to fire it across to Foster. Ill-advised pass, and now Garrison swips it away from Sloan, and the little man gets up and throws it down. It always seems to be Conley Garrison that can spur on a run. He just makes all those little plays. I say little, sitting at 6-1. Got up there, that gets the crowd on their feet. Back tied at 43. 
Sloan trying to get to the glass, fires it cross court, open three-pointer on the way, Brewer off the mark, here comes Bothwell. Paladins looking for that first lead, here's Hunter, over to Foster. Now Furman sets up the half-court offense. Slauson being aggressive and trying to get the ball. Back to Garrison, three-pointer on the way, no. So Garrison's had a couple looks that would have taken the lead and now Slauson, oh, oh, gets a hand on it, but it goes off ETSU. I think you see a little more active hands for the Paladins this half. I couldn't see what happened. I was stuck behind Coach Ritchie. She'll take anything you can get. Slauson got his hand on the pass and that went off the Bucks. Furman with another chance to get their first lead. Bucks four turnovers, the last 322. Garrison gets it. This is the most aggressive I've seen Colin Garrison get all year. He sees that his teammates have struggled from the perimeter. He's never really taken initiative to get his own offense, but here in the second half to start out, he spearheaded the Furman comeback. Furman now up two. Down as many as 10, now up two. King looks to respond, no. Media timeout, next whistle. Furman looking to expand the lead here early second half. Slauson, one-on-one -on -one against Seymour. Seymour, nice job defending, slows Slauson down. Double team come, back out to Bothwell. Three off the mark, rebound taken down by Sloan. Furman started knocking it down from long range, missed their last two. King going coast to coast, doesn't fall, but it'll be two shots for King when we come back. Mr. Oglesby, it's a dunk fest here in Greenville. There's been a lot of athletic plays. Ty Brewer to start out with, man. You get out in transition, you better find him. He's going to climb the rim. But Kyle Garrison said, what you can do, I can try to. Give me two hands for the Furman Pelham. Furman's eliminated a halftime deficit, now leads at 45-43. Terrence Furman started off the Southern Conference season strong, three and one to open up SOCOM play, a narrow loss on the road against BMI in Lexington, Virginia. Nothing comes easy in this league, but second half, Conley Garrison, seven points. He didn't have a shot attempt in that first half. Well, he started out strong, and he saw some of his teammates were really struggling, but you see what he's capable of doing. Coming off down screens, knocking down shots, creeping back, getting a steal in transition. Conley Garrison, Division II transfer, Drury University, three-time all-conference member in their conference, which was the Great Lakes Valley Conference. That's a mouthful, but some of these D2 conferences are nuts all in their own right. But nonetheless, the young man can play. Nice two-handed flush right before the media. Coach Ritchie says, hey, he may be the smartest basketball player he's ever coached. Always knows where to be, makes the right read. Well, the Big general self-awareness too, Brian. He knows that his teammates struggling to get offensive looks or knock down offensive looks. He doesn't take a shot in the first half, realizes his team needs him to get some kind of offense. Obviously, they're benefiting because of his general awareness offensively. King knocks down both on the line, back tie now at 45. ETSU for the game, still shooting above 50% at 52%. Furman at 43%. Tight man-to-man -man defense. Both teams have been playing it all game. Hunter takes a screen. Huey was open on the roll, but getting a hand on it was Ty Brewer. Now Garrison down low. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. For on the season, Conley Garrison, 86%. His assertiveness offensively is taking a step up here in the second half. Excellent cut to the basket. The foul coming on Sloan, not on the block up top by Ty right, Brewer. Prior to the shot getting off, but... Conley Garrison, just a cerebral player. A guy that you need, quite frankly, not able to make his first, but a guy that you need besides your big time scorers like Hunter Slauson and Bothwell fits right in and realizes, hey, our other three aren't having their best nights. This is when I can be assertive. Knocks down the second. Palin is back up one. Oftentimes, Terrence, you see teams that trail most of the first half, you so much energy to come back. Furman able to peek back in front early in the second half and not kind of have that mountain to climb. Pass down low, blocked from behind, but a foul, and going to the line will be Charlie Weber, the sophomore out of Maryland. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a replay of that, but this is a nice high-low look. And what Furman likes to do in the post is they love to get out in front, in front the post. You're going to be able to see on the replay here 
this is what happens. You flash a guy high, and you're going to have the whole backside. Furman's typically very fast and coming over and help side to help out with those situations. But nonetheless, good execution in the high-low by East Tennessee State. Weber, 85% on the line. Garrett Heen back in for Furman. Well, Garrett Heen, big three at the end of the first half. And that could have been really big for him, Brian, because he, he needs this spurt of confidence. Going into the half, knocks down the three. Wonder if he's going to come out a little bit more assertive, a little bit more confident. Foster getting a breather, or excuse me, Slauson getting a breather. He's played two fouls since late in the first half. You do have three fouls for Marcus Foster. Huey trying to knock it down from long range on line, a bit too strong. Garrison keeps it alive, but it's out of bounds, and it'll be back over to the Bucks. It's been fun basketball to watch here in the second half. Both teams executing at a high rate. Nice side pick and roll action. ETSU does a nice job of covering it, getting over the screen, chipping and getting out to the shooter. I mean, it's been high-level basketball to start out this half. Now Hunter to get a breather as Bothwell comes back in. I knew it was going to be a hotly contested basketball game. Is not disappointed here. We're early stages, second half. Hey, Joe, no tag, Joe. No tag, Joe. See, he hedging out on Brewer. Doesn't get back and an easy dunk by Weber. That all goes back to the hedge. Yeah, it all goes back to the hedge. And, and the backside was instructed to stay. And sometimes if you don't get back quick enough, you're going to leave yourself susceptible. Bucks back up two after Furman led by two points. That's been their largest lead. Heen battling down low. Foster one more to Bothwell with 10 on the shot clock. Bothwell working against Patterson off the glass. Doesn't get it to fall and Weber with the rebound and Heen's trying to get a jump ball and he's going to get called for a foul. Coach Ritchie doesn't like the call. That's a bad call. I'm not going to say it any differently than that, Brian. That's a bad call. Both hands on the ball. There you take That's another so sure. look battling and but, I mean right away two hands on the ball I mean it could be looked at from his angle as difficult to call but two hands on the ball now Furman gets whistled for their fifth team foul Conley Garrison and ATSU just person. attacks and attacks and attacks relentless in their offensive approach to the rim Lawson back in. Garrison takes a seat. And see Coach Ritchie trying to get some of the regulars some rest here as he knows this is going to be a battle for 40 minutes. Two-point lead. Bucks with the ball. Battling down low off the glass and in. And ETSU a 6-0 run. To go back up by four, 50-46. How many guys in this league that uh, Mike Bothwell is not going to be able to guard in the post, especially at his position, but... L.A. Brewer has enough length to get over the top. Bothwell looks to respond from three. Yes. Right back at you. Bothwell now two of six from long range. He has 13. That leads all Go! scorers, and it's back to just a one-point game. We talk about water always finds its level. Furman three of seven here in the second half, over 40%. Hey, Jordan King has been impressive. This... this Sienna transfer from Albany, New York, handling the ball, initiating offense, attacking the rim. That foul going against Marcus Foster, his fourth. Foster started this game hot at eight points early, quieted since, and he's going to have to go to the bench with those four personals with 13 12 to go. That's tough because he's one of your most switchable, versatile defenders. He can guard in the post, he can switch out on smaller players. That's hard. He can get the line where he's two of two tonight. He has seven points. First one rattles out. Alex Hunter will check back in. It's a big time coaching moment here. Coach Bob Ritchie stops Foster and having a lengthy conversation. Tell you what, you know you're a coachable kid. Foster's locked in. Yeah. Frustrated right. with his fourth foul, but listening close. Well, it happened right in front of us, and it was a great, it was great by Coach Ritchie to slow him down. Foster obviously frustrated. His competitor wants to be in the game. Slows him down, says, hey, I need you I need you to calm down. Last eight or so minutes of this game, we're gonna need you. Berman with the basketball trailing by two. It's the intense defense on the perimeter. Paladin's looking to knock down the three, but that's off the mark. 
Slauson, who was made his only one from long range early in the second half. Look at King just attack off the rebound. Yeah, and a good job, Bothwell, staying in front, getting back in transition defense, making them set up their offense. Five-man ball screen motion happening. Over to Weber, seven to shoot. Cross court, quick catch and shoot three. That one's short. Offensive board for the box, and they'll reset. And that's tough because that was a very good offensive possession and, quite frankly, a good defensive possession by Furman. Got to finish out whenever the shot goes up. Slauson went for the trap there over King. Five to shoot. Attacking by Patterson, and he... About 50 seconds of defending after 30 original and 20 on the O board. The Bucks back up four. Both teams absolutely not given an inch. Anderson pump fake goes baseline, tries to find a cutting Slauson, but throws the basketball away, and then the Bucks lose it out of bounds. Berman catches a break. It'll be Paladin basketball when we come back. 11:47 to go. Bucks holding to a four-point advantage. ETSU up by four, Bryant Lambert, Terrence Oglesby. And how about the Bucks in January, 42 and 10 over the new year since 2015. And tell you what, talk about coming to play. That's when conference season start. And ETSU gets off to a strong start in SoCon play. Trying for a big time win tonight. Well, I was talking to Archie Miller, who spends a lot of time with me on the field of 68. And he said, one thing he doesn't miss this season about coming back from Christmas, nobody's really happy to see you. ETSU's figured out ways to be excited to come back to campus, which is a really good thing, obviously. ETSU had some really good years here as of late. Uh, obviously, January has been very friendly. Now Furman turns it over all by himself as Brewer, who hesitates and fights through Slauson to push the lead to six at 55-49. Turnovers leading to fast break points. Hunter looking to respond quickly in and out, was halfway down. Furman did have a two-point lead in this second half after trailing by four at the half. Now the Bucks on a bit of a run out of bounds, Furman basketball. Now the officials are going to have a conversation. Are they going to reverse the call? There was never a call. I'm curious to see. I, I didn't well, think I think the baseline official had pointed to Furman, and now they say ETSU basketball. Keen out, Conley Garrison back in. You have a turnover coming out of the ha coming out of a timeout. First person, Coach Ritchie reaches out to Conley Garrison. Quick, get your tail back in the game. Brewer step back three, can't get it to fall. Rebound, J.P. Pagese. Bucks had made four of their last five before that attempt. This is when you need to score. No help coming, you need to score. Slauson turn around, baby hook, can't get it to fall. Berman already was 16 fouls, so want to be careful. Next foul puts the Bucks at the line as Sloan has it topped out of bounds. It'll be ETSU basketball. I thought that might have been off of ETSU, off a of mishandle. But. Berman, one of their last seven from the field, two and a half minutes without a point. Approaching the midway point of this second half. It was a four point lead for the Bucks at the half. Now lead it by six. Sloan. Going to work up top against Alex Hunter as shot clock goes to 10. It looks like they're going to call for a screen from Ladarius Brewer. Working against Bothwell into the lane as it stripped away. Three to shoot, two. It's going to be a shot clock violation. Oh, and I tell you what, Coach Ritchie hates the call because Mike Bothwell had possession going for a breakaway. Home crowd doesn't like it as well, Terrence. And this is about as animated as you're going to see Coach Ritchie. Take another look. I thought he had possession of it, too. You're going to yeah. see Bothwell take off the transition. He gets it. One dribble, yeah. Well, possess, maybe not. Possess not not dribble. full possession. But as long as you have general control, the ball should go to firm. I'm not sure about that call either. Raymond Stein's on the call. He was a little bit closer than we were, nonetheless. Might have had his back. I think that's the official that had overturned the out of bounds. Coach Ritchie fired up. Let's say his team gets the basketball back. Trailing by six. Here's Pagese. Sends it to Hunter in the corner. Out to Garrison. Down low to Slauson. Contact not called. Shot clock at eight. Bothwell. 
Over to Pegues, pump fakes, little baseline jumper. That's off the back of the rim. Long rebound, Conley Garrison. Garrison to Hunter, sends it to Bothwell in the corner. Bothwell fights through contact, finishes. Grown man layup by Mike Bothwell. Knows they have big time athletes, attacks their chest and gets the ball from his outside shoulder to bank it home. Bothwell now with 15, clock under 10 to play. Students getting into it on the far side. Yasser, nine points in the first half, quiet here in the second. Patterson, Yasser now with six to shoot, drives baseline against Pagis and gets the roll. And Yasser is just kind of a change of pace player for ETSU. The rest of their players thrive off of quickness and athleticism. He thrives off of leverage. Had several nice moves in the first half. Pagese, he'll fire a three-pointer right in front of the Furman bench. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. Slauson gets the rebound out to Garrison. Three-pointer. Yes. He's been the answer. He's been the answer for Furman here in the second half. Conley Garrison. Ten. Oh, excuse me. Eleven here all in the second half. They've needed an answer. He's been that answer. Ten offensive rebounds. Twelve second chance points. Pallet is back within one possession. Sloan working against Bothwell, maybe try to get it on the block. Sloan far side, open three on the way. Bonnie Patterson off the mark, weak side rebound. Yasser, he puts it off the glass. Back to back buckets for Yasser, he has 13. Change of pace, guys come off, freshman from Egypt. Doesn't force the issue, does a nice job playing off the players, but Conley Garrison has been terrific this half. 13 points, going for his 14th at the line. What a move. Garrison, who just knocked it down from long range, pump face, gets to the glass, and he'll get a chance to do a three the old-fashioned way. Hey, how about Garrison? All in the second half is 13 points. Just a general awareness. I mean, we talk about the cerebral player that plays on the, he's the fourth option on this team. You have Slauson, Bothwell, Hunter. He's a guy that doesn't necessarily assert himself until it's needed. And right now, when called upon, he's been terrific. He makes the free throw, two point game, 8-10 to go. Furman trying to get over the hump again. Sloan, dribbling out top. He's been running the offense tonight for the box, four points, but been directing traffic along with King. To the corner, Sloan looking to answer, and he does. David Sloan knocks it down. It's first from long range and back to a five-point game. ETSU keeps hitting big shots. Seems like every time that Furman starts to make something happen, there's an immediate answer from ETSU. David Sloan has been really, really good. Bothwell to Garrison. Can he do it again? Yes! Oh, terrific. Give him 17! Back to a two-point game. All in 12 minutes in the second half. He has come alive. Not a shot attempt in the first, but Conley Garrison just thriving, being extra assertive, shooting over the top of high hands on that last possession, still able to knock it through. Sloan off the foot of Foster, and it will stay with the Paladins when we come back. T.O. Conley Garrison, he's been that guy, whether it be knocking it down from three, or being aggressive, attacking the basket. That'll be an and one. Furman down two, clawing their back, the clawing back into it here in the second half. Great Southern Conference matchup here inside Timmons Arena. Taking a look at scores around the league. Terrence up in Cullowick. Big time matchup for Chattanooga. Rivalry matchup a bit in Western Carolina. Can they pull off a stunner? Hey, you can fall asleep in Cullowick now. Not a whole lot going on. Probably not a ton of people there. Students just now getting back in the mix. Chattanooga super talents, but you got to win on the road too. But how about Walford kind of bouncing back? Struggled a little bit here as of late. Struggled to guard the three. Obviously have a good grip on it against Samford. It'll be ETSU basketball after the timeout. Welcome back to the Conley Garrison show. All the second half, Conley Garrison, six of eight from the field, three of five from long range, 17 points after not having a shot attempt in that opening 20 minutes. Every time the pound doesn't creep close, ETSU's had a big shot. Furman did have a brief two-point lead early in this half. Sloan working against Garrison. He gets into the paint all the way to the rim, misses the layup. 
did everything but make it, and now will be a foul against ETSU on the rebound. That's going against Ladarius Brewer. It's going to be his third personal. Nice drive by Sloan. Got a little too cute with a little bit too much English. Just either need to dunk it or as little English as possible. Coach Richard Turden and telling the staff they're trying to take Garrison to the rim, but right now you need him on offense right for the pound as you're looking to tie it with a two, take a lead with a three. Trying to get a look for Garrison, sends it over to Bothwell, down low Slauson. Slauson working against Ty Brewer. Physical play and Brewer's gonna get called for the personal, Ty Brewer second. You need to slide your feet a little bit better if you're Ty Brewer, that's an obvious foul call. Reach around the back, need to do a better job. Moving your feet early into possession, don't let Slauson get so deep. Shot clock back to 20 and can't happen. Another inbound mistake. Getting late, six and a half to go. Bucks with the basketball up two, now four. Fighting through traffic is Ty Brewer. Give Ty Brewer now 15 points to lead all ETSU scores. And that's the issue because you get matched up. You turn the ball over, live ball turnover, they can get out and run and you struggle to match up. Hunter from long range and a timeout taken by Coach Bob Ritchie as Furman has crawled within one. Furman has hit their last four from the field. Don't go away. We got a barn burner in the Southern Conference here in Greenville. It's been the Conley Garrison show for the Paladins in the second half, and he's the reason Furman's only down one. Well, he's been terrific, whether it be coming off down screens and knocking down shots, playing off his teammates or driving to the bucket. Conley Garrison's been terrific here in the second half. Didn't have a shot attempt. Felt like we've said that about 10 times now. Didn't have a shot attempt in the first half. Second half, a lot more assertive, and he's proven to be a quality scorer at his previous stop, Drew University, D2 school. But man, his transition to Furman in the Southern Conference has been seamless. And he has been on fire here in the second. Will be ETSU basketball after the timeout. Coach Bob Ritchie used his first timeout of the second half. Furman has two remaining. Points in the paint, been a battle. ETSU with 36, Furman with 24. Sloan's been getting to the rim and causing havoc. Now trying to back down, Alex Hunter gets into the lane and finishes. That's hard to stop, Sloan now with nine. Man, it's been a really well-played basketball game. Sometimes you gotta resort to a little bully ball when your offense isn't clicking, but Sloan has just kind of been, made a lot of individual isolation plays here in the second half. Here's Foster, very representation, T.O. with the first half, finishes with the left hand, he's in double digits with 10, back to a one point game. He has 10 points, eight of which have been to his left hand. Driving to his left hand, finishing high off the glass, one of the most improved players for Coach Richie's team. Man, Sloan has taken it upon himself. Really aggressive, gets where he wants. That'll be one and one for Furman. That's early, and then that's gonna play a part here moving in towards the end of the game. One and one, 519 to play. Look for that to play a big factor. Hey, what? Sloan gets down there again, doesn't finish, and then a little aggressive on the foul. It's just his third person, Marcus Foster to the line, trying to tie things up. Foster comes in, 72% on the year, limited attempts. First one round is home, and back to a tie game at 66. First time we've been tied since 16 minute mark. ETU, TTSU Terrence has played with the lead almost the entire game since the opening tip. Furman a brief stint early in this second half. Foster can put the Paladins back up one. Furman's made their last five from the field. But every time he, during the course of this game, Furman's made a run and ETSU has answered. What does that tell you? Furman needs to sit down and get a stop to try to extend out this lead, but it's really hard when David Sloan's running the point. He can just find shots for his guys. That ball halfway down for Ty Brewer, and Furman now with the lead and the basketball under five to go. Furman's largest lead has been two. The Bucks have led by 10. And you'll notice here for the last five minutes or so of this game, it's gonna slow down and it's gonna be one in the half court. How are you gonna make your teammates better and who's gonna make shots? Look at that heavy pressure defense. Hunter into the lane, can't get it to fall. Offensive board tap to Bothwell. He's blocked, a lot of contact, no call. Here come the Bucks. King into the front court. He's blocked by Slauson. Comes from behind, Paladin basketball. Up to Foster. Foster across the lane. And ETSU across the inline will stay with the Paladins. Oh, Foster had Bothwell running 
You said in the half court, back and forth we go, Tio. <laughs> it seems like I've been wrong pretty much all day, but what a block by Jalen Sloss. And one of the conference leaders in both blocks and steals, but man, he gets one. He's coming from behind for a LeBron block, if you will. He can get up there with the best of them. Terrific transition block. Hey, what? Felt like Furman had that 2 on one break. Nice job by the Bucks getting back defensively. Furman will have it in the half court. Garrison trying to get a look against Sloan. Comes up down the lane and tell you what, when you overplay the three, Conley Garrison has 19. Well, he does a nice job coming off a of ball screen and he knows where his defender's at. ETSU's been going over the top of ball screens and he's able to pin the defender on his back. It looks like ETSU is going to have a timeout trying to settle their team down, but Conley Garrison holds the defense on his back, does a terrific job of getting all the way down to the bucket. Takes us to our final media timeout. Paladin's largest lead up three as Timmons on their feet. Coming alive, a tough place to play in the Southern Conference. T.O., you like that timeout by Desmond Oliver. Well, if it gets out to two possessions, you have your hands full moving from here on out. ETSU's done a nice job of answering every single possession. A lot of that's been the result of David Sloan getting downhill and creating looks for his teammates, but you need to try to keep this game one possession on the road as long as you can. Obviously concerned about getting a good shot. Each team in the one and one, both teams two timeouts left, still 350 to go. Try to get it down low, skip pass far side for the tie, short rebound Slauson. Got an open look, couldn't knock it down. Bucks just four of 19 from long range. Hey, Furman's 10 of 33. And look, not a terrible possession. Probably don't want Seymour taking that shot. That's probably not the guy you want with the ball in his hands, down three in a close ball game. Slauson, mismatch down low, working against Sloan. Double team hesitates to come. Fade away, Slauson halfway down and out. Slauson got a good look, couldn't finish. He's had about three of those, Bryant, to where he's gotten good position, gotten close to the rim, and it's just hit every part of the rim and out. Slauson has seven points. Bucks back with the basketball, trailing by three. David Sloan's coming back to get this basketball. He's been really good in pick and roll situations and isolations. They've really attacked Mike Bothwell today, and he's been able to shake free and knock down huge shots. David Sloan was our key player. And man, has he played like it. He's got to the rim and there. Step back three to give him 12 points. We're knotted up at 69. Sloan came in 43% on the year from long range. Tie ball game, 245 to go. Trying to respond as Foster off the mark. Rebound out of bounds. Buccaneer basketball. A good offensive possession by Furman. Ball moves, but man, look at this. Step back over high hands. David Sloan has been a problem, whether it's knocking down tough shots like that or getting in the paint. Game has come down to how he's been able to handle it so far, the catalyst for the Buccaneers. Foul trouble, so to speak. Bucks have Brewer with three and Sloan with three. Paladins have Foster with four. And that's really the only big foul trouble to speak. Bucks can take a lead with the bucket. Sloan with the basketball, working against Bothwell. Sends it to the corner, three on the way, but to wave it off, oh, he was he out of bounds. Ladarius Brewer made it, but he stepped on the sideline and is back to the Paladins in a tie game. Not a bad offensive possession, and one thing that's becoming reoccurring here in the second half is they're trying to get Mike Bothwell to switch out on the ball. ETSU feels like they have an advantage whenever David Sloan is being guarded by Bothwell. Slauson dribble hand off to Bothwell. Over to Foster, looks like Furman's trying to get it to Slauson on the post. Now he comes out to get it extended. Working against Ladarius Brewer, double team comes back to Bothwell, 10 to shoot, hesitates. Down to Slauson, reverse layup, count it. Furman up two with 1.45 to go. Great job by Slauson, staying patient when he gets the ball in close. Natural thing to do is try to get it up there quick. Knows that ETSU's been going for a lot of ball fakes. Maintains his composure and knocks it in. And you see Bothwell and Sloan once again. Comes over, gets the stop. Three Paladins came over to stop it. Garrison leading the break over to Slauson. Coach Ritchie wants his team to set it up in the half court. 1.20 to go, 20 on the shot clock. Furman up two, Bothwell 
Pump fakes, goes baseline, back to Garrison. Can he do it from the corner? Yes! He's been the man! Conley Garrison gives the Paladins a five-point lead. Give the man 22! 74-69, timeout ETSU, and look at this crowd come along. Man, he has been nothing short of sensational. My man Conley Garrison knocking down big shots. This one coming from the corner and an excellent feed by Bothwell. Does a nice job stopping, pivoting, not getting out of control. Nice fill behind by Conley Garrison. Somebody drives that baseline, you gotta have somebody come around just in case of an emergency situation like that. Conley Garrison has been terrific. I'm, I'm gonna go on a limb. Usually we kind of do this a little more uh, as a group. Papa John's player of the game, guys. Conley Garrison. Nah, there's go no, ahead, there's get no the highlight need to... package ready. Throw the graphic up. Byron App, his entire great ESPN crew. I'm gonna make your job easy tonight. Yeah. And say Conley Garrison. Really but, hey, simple. Still plenty decision. of time for ETSU. 103 to go. They now have one timeout left. The Paladins with two. For ETSU, you don't need a three right now. No, you don't. You can attack the rim. Obviously, you'll take a three if it presents itself. But David Sloan's done a nice job getting downhill pretty much any time he wants. Now, they do probably need to initiate offense a little bit faster than what they have been. But this has been a back-and-forth game the entire time. Whether it's Conley Garrison for Furman, whether it's David Sloan for ETSU. High-level basketball game here at the Timmons. Furman now 45% for the game. And you talked about water getting level, whatever you're saying is you right. go with. Well, how about this? Furman now shooting 31% from three. Lower than their season average, but a lot more than 20% in the first half. And tell you what, Conley Garrison, eight of 10, four sticks from long range, six rebounds and two assists. Still plenty of time for the Bucks. 63 seconds to go. You got to imagine Furman switching everything well, up top. Oh, absolutely. That's what's going to happen. But Furman seven for 15 in the second half from distance. Really, really good. King to inbound up top with it slow, and you got to imagine he'll run the offense. Yasser wants to take Garrison off the glass, can't get it to go. Rebound Slauson. Now, if you're ETSU, you were elect to foul. The Bucks have 17 fouls, so it'll be a one and one. Hunter working against Sloan, heavy ball pressure. And right now, it looks like ETSU is going to play this one out, and there's the bump. After about probably not what you want. If you're yeah. gonna foul and you know the other team's in the bonus, you need to do it earlier in the possession. Don't let 15 seconds run off. Foul early if that's what you decide you're gonna do. If not, you can let it play out. Two possession ball game. There's still plenty of time to get back in it. Lawson, one and one from the free throw, one, one and one from the line, and he makes the first 73% on the year. He did miss two earlier in the basketball game. And again, going back, if you play by the average, Lawson will make this. Coach Ritchie, I believe if this goes in, he may be calling a timeout. Second free throw for Lawson, in and out. Bucks get a rebound. Six point game, still just a two possession game. Quickly into the front court, King. A contested two-point jumper off the mark. Strong rebound, Marcus Foster. And yeah, I don't know if that's the look they're looking for no. for the Bucks. a tough two. No, that's probably not it. You applaud the aggressiveness early in the clock by Jordan King, but you either need to attack the basket, try to get fouled to stop the clock and get to the free throw line, or you need to shoot a three, especially you're down six points. Mid-range two, highest risk, lowest reward. Not the shot you want with 35 seconds to go. Foster to the line. That's the ninth team foul for ETSU, so still a one and one. What a great basketball game. High level. High level. And this both is only ends. January. Both, both teams, ETSU has been swarming defensively, really exhibited their athleticism. Furman becoming composed in the second half, dealing with pressure. Conley Garrison has been terrific. Excellent basketball game. That free throw made it a three possession game at seven. Furman in the midst of a 13 to three run over the last 5.06. Marcus Foster has played the last eight minutes with four fouls. His discipline on the defensive end has also really helped things. Timeout taken by the Paladins, eight point game. The largest lead for Furman. See what ETSU has upcoming. They'll stay on the road to go to Birmingham to take on the Sanford Bulldogs and then Nothing comes easy in the Southern Conference. And going back to the Southern Conference in Cullowee right now, Western Carolina has an 11-point lead on Chattanooga. That's big time, especially when you're looking at Furman's 
ranking within, or the, their standing within the conference. Them, well, UTC, obviously going to be significant. See what the Paladins have upcoming. A big one on national TV Saturday at Chattanooga, the Roundhouse, and they'll be back home to take on Western Carolina. Again, nothing comes easy for the Paladins. If you can get this one at home, it's big to protect your home court as Marcus Foster came in averaging 7.4 points. He's sitting with a big time, I'll call it the early and late contribution of Marcus Foster's 14 points. He was big early and he's been big late. Furman's putting in some token full court pressure to use the clock. I like this. Takes ATSU out of anything they were trying to do towards the end of the game. Big time rebound. And who else, Bryant? Who else? Kylie Garrison ends up with the ball. Desmond Oliver were trying to wave off the foul, was saying no fouls, but it'll be Garrison to go to the line to shoot two. Even so, I mean, if you're ETSU, you get the shot you want. You got your attacking pressure, full court one, two, two pressure, just if nothing else, to slow it down a little bit and get them out of what they were doing. But kind of like Garrison, man. 23 terrific. points. All, all half. I was about to say all game long, all <laughs> half long. Like, he knocks his down. That's 24. You know what got for him the going? Big fella. The two handed jam. That's it. Woke him up and. It's about the only thing he's done wrong all night. Nine point game, 20 seconds to go. King looking to go coast to coast. Furman will give up the layup, but King misses. Moffwell gets the rebound and ETSU calls off the dogs. And what a win for the Paladins. Finishing the game on a 9-0 run. 15-3 run over the last 5-26. And Furman moves on in the Southern Conference to now four and one. T.O. big time performance by the Paladins. Credit the Bucks. Oh, credit the Bucks showed elite athleticism, the ability to make plays defensively. ETSU was a really fun team to watch with some big time athletes. But Furman, this is a big win for them, Brian. You have to find ways to score, ways to win when your three balls not working. Kylie Garrison in the second half was the story.